I still find it really funny that my second most viewed video ever is my least favorite and most disappointing books of 2020. So of course I had to make the same video for 2021. Also, I just filmed my best books of 2021 video and you know, gotta include both sides, right? I'm not just going to include the books that I think were the worst books I read in 2021 in this list because sometimes I read a book and it's just not that great, but I don't have very much to say about it. So this is going to be a combination of books that were my least favorite books that I read and books that were actually kind of okay or that I thought were pre even pretty good sometimes, but that I was particularly disappointed in. These are going to be in no particular order except the order that I wrote them down on my list when I was brainstorming for this video. So earlier this year, I had a brief craving for some historical fiction, a genre I used to read quite a bit and then got kind of sick of because it felt, especially historical fiction about or aimed at women, it felt very formulaic and didn't really dig into things that actually made me excited to read historical fiction. So a book that I read this year that I thought looked very interesting was Liberty by Caitlin Greenidge. It's based on an actual historical figure, kind of, who was the first African-American woman doctor. And it's about the daughter of a fictionalized version of this character. This book, the reason I'm talking about it, I did mention it in a wrap up, but the reason it's on this list is because it managed to be absolutely everything I hate about the kind of historical fiction that I don't like. So it was set in an absolutely fascinating time period that I really wanted to learn more about. It was set in the free black community in New York post-Civil War. There was a lot going on then. It, it could have been really, really interesting, except all the things that were actually interesting and all the characters that were actually doing anything interesting were kind of in the background, like they were just window dressing. Well, the story focused on this character, Liberty, the daughter of a doctor, and basically just her whiny mama issues. She really doesn't do anything in the entire book except make bad life decisions and then try to come to terms with her relationship with her mother. So yeah, I mean, there were so many interesting characters in this period and even kind of around the sides of the story in this book. And instead it was just a story that could have been set at any time. That's not what I want from historical fiction. I, I, I want to sort of engage with the, the period and the history and, not just have it be like an excuse to tell exactly the same story where there's an intelligent, spunky young woman who grows up and ends up making a bad marriage and then comes to terms with things. That's literally the plot of like half, no, um, way more than half the historical fiction I've ever read. And I, I never want to read that plot again. One of the weirdest books I've ever read, I read this year, it was The Dragon Waiting by John M. Ford. And it was a re-release. The author had passed away I think at a relatively young age, and this kind of caused some issues with his estate and the publication of his books, and so they pretty much fell out of print. So The Dragon Waiting sounds kind of interesting. It's set kind of during the Wars of the Roses, except the Byzantine Empire is still a huge global power, and also there's vampires and magic. So it sounds like kind of a cool premise, but it's just, it's such a weird book. And this is a book that has kind of a cult following too, where there are people like, really well-known authors saying this is like one of the best books they've ever read or John Ford is one of the smartest authors they've ever read. And I, I rarely feel like I'm too stupid for a book, but I felt kind of too stupid for this book. It was like very hard to follow. The first three chapters were each a novella almost, or at least a short story about specific characters. And then in chapter four, they they all show up except under like assumed names and you just really don't know what's going on for a really long time until they finally all reveal themselves. So I had to do some pretty intense Googling and Wikipedia digging to figure out a lot about the Wars of the Roses because nothing is really explained. And look, this author, John Ford, was clearly a brilliant guy. It's just this book was confusing and made no sense. <laughs> there wasn't really anything I enjoyed about it. So the world seems to fall into the, the people that think this book is like underrated genius and people like me that just don't really get it. Uh, I'm almost tempted to try again because so many people praised this book so highly, but I think that would probably be a really big mistake. And to be clear, my problem with it wasn't just that it was confusing. I tend to actually really enjoy being confused, but 
I didn't really find any like redeeming qualities in the book. I think the reason people like it so much is because of the intricacy of how he worked everything out or something like that. And that just didn't do it for me. 2021 was the first year that I started reading advanced reader copies from NetGalley. And there was one I requested called All the Murmuring Bones, which was a really good lesson to me to be more careful about what I request. I, I did a review of this. I'll link to it down below. I don't like doing negative reviews of things. It's not just that I, I do negative reviews of things sometimes, but I don't really enjoy doing reviews where I just complain about books. I think I managed to do a pretty balanced review of it. I guess my philosophy when I do reviews is I wouldn't want the author to feel like hurt and offended if they found it. I sort of give my own opinion and try to give, you know, my thoughts on who might enjoy the book. But to me, this was a book that didn't work very well. And I felt a bit bad that I had sort of committed to reviewing it, I guess. I just thought it was one of those books that sort of got tone really well and just didn't work as a book, at least not for me. It was set in a, an alternate world that I didn't realize was actually an alternate world for way too long. And it just honestly is one of those books that made me feel kind of weird when I finished it. Like I felt like I wasn't sure what it was trying to say, but it made me feel a little gross. I don't know. If you want to know more, you can go watch my review. Um, since then, I've tried to be a little more selective about what I request on NetGalley. One of my worst reading experiences of 2021 was reading The Burning God by R.F. Kuang, the third book in the Poppy War trilogy. I had issues with the first two books, at least not in terms of quality, but they both made me feel quite traumatized and disturbed afterwards. On the other hand, a lot of the things that were in them are things that have happened, you know, to people in actual history that are quite rightly disturbing. But the third book, I just had such a hard time pushing myself through. I know this is one, again, that some people, some people really liked this conclusion to the trilogy and other people came sort of more, more on my side of thinking where I just felt unsatisfying and depressing. For me, my problem was just by book three in the series, I just hated every single character. It's not just that I hated them. They were all bad people. And I just, I, I don't know if I'm an optimist, but I don't think all people are bad. Like there was only one character in the entire series that had any kind of moral compass, it seemed. And I guess I just, I don't want to read about that. I don't mind things that are a little bit grimdark, but I don't want to read books where everyone is awful. So I'm not really blaming this one even on, on the author. It's not that I necessarily think it was a bad book. I just ended up not enjoying the series, not really enjoying its perspective, and just not really wanting to read that kind of thing. Another book that I think people had quite split opinions on and that was definitely sort of on the negative side for me was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Some people loved this book, some people did not love this book. I am, obviously, since it's in this video, I did not love this book. I thought it was bloated, self-indulgent, and the most boring look at immortality that I've ever seen. Like, there's this character who lives for hundreds of years and, like, she just mopes around about her cursed situation while completely having a lack of interest in history or anything really going on around her. Well, you know, occasionally the author throws in little snippets of history so that we know time is passing and that she is actually doing stuff. But really this for me was just a case of the author was super in love with this character who is super not interesting to read about. So yeah, it's funny because immortal characters are one of my favorite tropes and I still I hated this book and I don't say that very often. I, I almost didn't finish it, but I very rarely DNF things that I've gotten halfway into. So I just, I just powered through and yeah, I think I have a mini review up of this along with a, a few other books. So if you want a few more thoughts, you can check that out, I guess, but yeah. I read the entire series of Wayward Children novellas, at least, you know, the ones that are out so far this past year. And I read them because of the Hugo Awards and I don't really like novellas. Um, anyway, I do overall like Sean and McGuire, at least I was, you know, like, okay on Middle Game. I really loved her Encrypted series, which I finished or caught up on in 2021. 
And I, I knew that Wayward Children probably wouldn't be for me because I don't love portal fantasy and I, I don't love angsty teenage characters all that much either, to be honest. So I kind of knew going in that it wouldn't be for me. It wasn't for me. I think some people just really connect to the, the themes and the stories in this series and I can kind of understand that. It just, there's nothing about it that really worked for me. I feel like it was more the pretentious side of Sean and McGuire that's trying to be really like important and have messages. And even if I kind of agree with the messages, that's just not the kind of writing I enjoy from her. I kind of like encrypted where it's just completely a bit silly and over the top. Okay, now I have a few things that I didn't think were bad. I just was really, really let down in them. The first one I'll talk about is The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. This is a collaboration in the first book and I think a trilogy um, between Marie Brennan and, oh, what's the co-author's name? Alec Helms. Okay, I actually had the Memoirs of Lady Trent series by Marie Brennan as one of my favorite things that I read in 2021. And The Mask of Mirrors got a ton of hype when it was released and it sounded exactly like the kind of fantasy that I really, really enjoy with, you know, it's like um, politics, very epic, world building, a lot of stuff. And it was fine. I, it actually took me a really long time to finish it because I sort of put it down for about half the year and then finished it up. And so it's not that there was anything wrong with this book. It was perfectly enjoyable, but I was so convinced that I was gonna love it that I was actually quite disappointed that I just, I didn't have a strong reaction to it. I'm gonna read the next one in the series and it might even pick up. I, I felt like this was a series I should have loved and I, I don't know why I didn't love this book, but I just, I didn't and that was disappointing. Another book that I'm pretty sure I had in a five star predictions video I did earlier in 2021 was The House in the Cerulean, I can't say that word, House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, which is a book that everyone was going crazy about for quite a while. And again, I thought I was gonna love it. It was okay. I didn't love it. It was cute in a way that doesn't really speak to me. I think that's kind of what happened. I also have realized I am not really a big fan of found family books and like found family as a trope. I love books about friendships and close platonic relationships and things like that even much more than I am someone who enjoys reading about romance. But something specifically about like a certain kind of found family trope it honestly does nothing for me emotionally. Couldn't really tell you why. So this book, I read it pretty recently. It was perfectly fine, but it was not mind-blowingly amazing like I had kind of been led to believe. Last one on here, another big disappointment. I finally read Persuasion by Jane Austen. Now I've read almost all of Jane Austen at this point. I hadn't read Persuasion before and I had heard from a lot of people that it was their favorite Jane Austen book. So I was really hyped and I read it and it was fine. Um, did not, probably, it was probably my least favorite Jane Austen book that I've ever read. It was still really well written. I mean, it's Jane Austen. I enjoyed the style and, and I enjoyed reading it, I guess, but I was left very flat by it. I didn't really connect with it very well. I read it along with a friend who had basically exactly the same reaction. And I actually asked my mother, who is a writer and editor and former English literature major, uh, what's so good about it? And she reread it and then she remembered really liking it, but she had kind of the same reaction as us as well. So I don't know, clearly, once again, there are people that love Persuasion and people that don't. I even made my husband watch the movie with me. I didn't really like the movie that much. It had its moments. So I don't know, this one just wasn't for me and I feel kind of weird about that. So, I mean, Persuasion was far from the worst book that I read in 2021, but I was extremely disappointed in it. So that's why it's in this video. So those are my nine worst and most disappointing books that I read in 2021. Let me know if I have horribly insulted any of your favorite books. If so, I'm really sorry. This is just my personal opinion. I think that goes without saying. And let me know as well, what were your least favorite books from 2021? And 
if there were any that you were really looking forward to that really let you down.